Okay, so I'm here with Simon from Show Technology. Simon, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Good to have you. Now, tell us what we've got today. Uh, so we have the M1 from Martin, new console, out just at the beginning of the year. Fantastic. It, um, it, looks, it looks like it does uh, quite a lot in a fairly small package. How, how, it doesn't even look like it weighs that much, dude. You <laughs> could fit this in a car. Yeah, indeed. I think that's a, a major point. I think the idea is that you can get it in your car and even fly with it. Oh, we have a special case where it's only 32 kilograms, so you could take okay. it on a plane with you. There's one monitor built in, so this is a touchscreen. Yeah, I was just having a play with that earlier. It does all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, you can put another external touchscreen on if you'd like. Uh, Universe-wise, it's got four universes built in at the back. Yep. And you can expand that up to 12 universes using a Martin node, an a, a Ether to DMX node. Okay. So up to 12 universes, so for a small physically small console that's um it's quite powerful okay now you you mentioned the node using that you can also run backup for a show yep. as well with a pc can't you yeah we're really lucky at the moment this is a beta software from martin so this is a new release yep. um available really shortly to download and one of the key new releases is its network options uh, so you're able to either have a second console network those together so if one console fails you can move over to the second uh, but also you could use your laptop as well to network, so you get full tracking backup from your laptop. Okay, fantastic. Now, you mentioned the beta software, and, and I was playing earlier and discovered something else, which is new and called the fixture, uh -huh. the fixture editor. How good yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah, really excited about that. That's, uh, we've been long, long awaited the fixture editor. Uh, so it allows you to create your own fixture profiles or edit existing profiles. Okay, now, one, one thing that, that strikes me as very cool is that you've, we've got these custom page options. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. What can you put on a custom page? Yeah, sure. When you when you load a console up, you get these default screens that we have here. But um, all of those are editable, so yeah. you can change those. But also, there's a whole second page of empty screens. So you can set the console to display um, any of the information in any way that you would like. Um, and then that layout, that screen layout, you can store to um, export it to a USB stick. So you can go up to any console, load your layout view in, and yep. look at, say, somebody else's show, but with your screen layout. Okay, so you can, that's, that's not the only thing you can customise, right? You can store your own layouts for the playback yeah, sure. traders and buttons as well? Yeah, so you can, def you can define what command is associated to each button, whether it be flash or go or release. Mm -hmm. And then all of those settings, and also the default settings of the console, so uh, queue times and um, store defaults. You can also export those to a profile on a USB stick as well. So really you can rock up to anyone's console, plug your USB in, hit load, and make it work like your own. Yeah, yeah, fully customize it to your, your own needs. Yep. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and now you can also do some other cool things, like uh, we, we've got a whole lot, uh, these, playback, these playback faders and buttons operate separately to the center sure. section, so you could have uh, one set of things and you could be paging through here and keeping all your things like you know, strobes and... Yeah, yeah. I see that this is maybe our main playback. So maybe you have a page per song if you're doing a rock show. And then over here you have all, all the other bits. So like strobes and haze and, and color bumps and things like that. Lights for the video guys. Lights for the video guys or essential on that top photo, yeah. Yeah, yeah you've got to know which one to pull down to make them happy. Um, and you've also got some customizable user keys here as well. Yeah, these are great. So you can either store maybe a command like a, a store or, or lock the console. You can lock the console from these keys so you need to enter a password to open it again. Or what we've got at the top here is um, quick view for the monitors. Okay. Now, on that note of locking the console, if you, uh, you've got DMX input as well, so you could notionally, if you were having you know, the main band for a show, band scenario, if you're having a main band operated off this and you wanted to give the support band something, you could give them like a just a 12 channel desk mm -hmm. and then take the input from that into this and then sure, yeah. allow access to certain parts of the mm -hmm. rig via the console and it would still allow that to pass through when it's locked? Yeah, um, DMX in is, is actually quite powerful. You can either do DMX merge, so fader one, DMX channel one on the DMX in, outputs with value one indeed um, or you could use the faders on your fader board to trigger certain features of the console certain playbacks or effects so you could give somebody just a, a six-way six-way desk mm -hmm. and lock that um, features down or if you just need extra faders if you just need more playbacks um, more physical space yeah 
Yeah. Okay. And on that note, there are wings as well for sure. programming and extra playback and stuff as well, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. Martin have got um, a selection of wings uh, that just plug in via USB. So there's USB on both sides of the console and on the back. Sure. Um, and other options, there's also uh, a MIDI option. So if you wanted to, you could be running a queue list off MIDI time card. Yeah, indeed. Like that. Yeah, that's a, that's an additional. It just sits in the back here. That seems to be getting more popular, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think definitely. I think one, once upon a time it was only the uh, accessible to the the biggest rock shows, but I think now it's going to be a lot more commonplace. Especially, I, I guess, stuff like this is making it more more viable as an option. Yeah, definitely. For more users. Where do you see this uh, sitting? Uh, installation, hire companies, a bit of both. I think ideally uh, a little bit of everything. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, I really see it as um, uh, a mid-range console. So I think we're going to be talking a lot about one one night events, uh, maybe some uh, rock and roll, 20 moving lights, maybe a corporate dinner where you've got very little programming time and you need to get in there quick. And not much real estate. Not And no space. And equally, I think it's going to work really well on theatre tours where the space on either the truck or on the plane is really limited. So where you just need to really keep it physically, keep it really small. So I think it's going to work well for those type of um, customers as well as in stores. I think it's going to do really well in uh, mid-range, mid-sized theatres too. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've, had, you know, I've had it for a little while here before you got here, obviously. Um, I've had a play with it and, and from someone who's a bit of a lighting dinosaur, I, I go in there and there's things I recognise. Sure. There's, there's palettes, there's yep. groups. Um, the groupings, the groupings really cool. Yeah, it's you really powerful. Lot, like, there's mm. a, all the groups you could ever want. Um, and there's there's playback pages and it all sort of it feels very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you think do you think people are going to have a, a pretty easy time picking up on how it works? Yeah, I think that Martin really have understood who they are targeting the console at and they've made uh, uh, made it very intuitive and they've made the operation the playback very very comfortable for people that are currently using other consoles so i think sure. you could step to the console and actually get lights to light to come out of your fixtures and make them move around and strobe really very quickly yeah i i, I tend to agree with you I mean, mm. i'd like a little more time to play with it but uh, i'd i'd walk into a show with it tomorrow if yeah. I had to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and we've had uh, we've had people take the console off us with no training and just use it straight away. Yeah, you know, it certainly certainly seems fairly self-explanatory. And it, the other nice thing is that there, there are, it seems like there's a couple of different ways of doing things, like, you know, your mm -hmm. colour pickers and so on, you've got on-screen options. Um, and I really like this too, this context-sensitive buttons, which change yeah. colour and so on. Yeah, That's the little cool LCD too. buttons. Yeah, they're great, and so they're they're really clever because they they obviously label to what you've got selected, mm. but also when you change the mode, so whether you're running it in effect mode, which we are now, it labels all the the effect attributes as well. So yeah, I think that's a really a really key feature. Now talk to us on that note of effects. Um, mm. One of the things I've always been a big fan of is is the ability to quickly fan a, a parameter. Mm -hmm. Can we do that on this console? Yes, of course. Yep. Uh, so. If we selected an attribute, select a light, select an attribute that you want to run that fan on, yep. let's say uh, intensity or, or, or position, uh, down on our LCD, LCD buttons down the side here, we literally have a button that's labeled fan. And we have some options then assigned to the encoder, and we can either just do a straight fan from 0 to 100, where that's a nice linear between all our fixtures. We could do a curve, or we could do a weird shape as well within that fan. And you can do offsets and all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so it's like fanning with... With Fan more options. Indeed, yeah, Fanning Plus. Excellent. Okay, great. Look, um, if people want to download the, the MPC software, where do, where do they go to that? Yeah, martin.com. Excellent. Yeah. And if they want to find out more, uh, it's distributed through Show Technology. Yep, yeah, so they can contact uh, any of the Show Tech offices or, or contact me directly. We're going to be running some training around the country uh, over the next six months. We're going to be doing a lot of um, introductory free training days that uh, people are welcome to come along to. Excellent. Great. Simon, thanks for your time. Pleasure. Martin M1.